About these concerns? No. What about um, when you were in North Carolina? You developed a pretty good friendship with Amber Pfeiffer? Yeah, yeah. Actually, she's uh, someone you might had who was a very close friend of mine for uh, quite some time now. So, did you maintain that friendship when you got to, to Seattle? Actually, I uh, basically cut off all of my, um, and going like leaving all of the online stuff uh, entirely, basically. Because she was very, uh, she got really pretty jealous about me spending time on that. She and meaning Michelle. Well, did you have this conversation like, hey, Amber's my friend, and she, I mean, she lives in Vermont, how much of a threat could she be? It's Vermont, right? Yeah, I mean, she, she specifically was really upset about Amber because it's like, this is somebody who is a female friend of yours, and just, she felt that she was being really disrespectful and really felt very, um, antagonistic towards Amber. To the point where she wanted to go off and kill her too, I'm just like, and kind of made it seem like she was a uh, bad person as well. Do you know if there was any, ever any direct contact between Michelle and Amber? You know, one time uh, I was online talking to uh, Amber in instant messages, and she's like, because she wanted to go, and she'd uh, actually wanted me to go off and say hi to Michelle for her, and she actually wanted to go off and like, talk to Michelle. She, because she was my friend, she wanted to be Michelle's friend as well. Ever. Yeah, yeah. And um, actually, uh, Michelle reacted uh, very poorly to that. Reacted very? Very poorly to that. What, what exactly was her reaction? Her reaction was actually, uh, was actually angle. I don't know if it was the way that Amber tried to say hi or what, but she was, she actually reacted instantly and uh, very angrily to uh, Amber's overture of you know, so. So did you ever, uh, how did you stop having contact with him? Um, she spent a short time in jail, and uh, while she was in jail, Michelle managed to convince me that Amber was actually really not a particularly good person to have around, and so I kind of ended up uh, Sitting while I was saying, look, I don't want to have anything to do with you, and she was like, that's not strong enough. So, end up having to go like run it by Michelle, making it meaner and meaner as with each passing until it's like, okay, well, there you go, is that good enough? So, uh, yeah. Okay, so Michelle has concerns about the, the neighbors, um, and uh, where was she, when, once you were in Fall City, where was she working at that point? When we were in Fall City, she had, uh, by then she had actually transferred to Nintendo. Nintendo? And, and yeah. what town is that facility in? Uh, that's in Redmond. And what was she doing, very generally, at Nintendo? Security guard. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of shifts would she work? Was that a day shift? All. Or Sorry? All. All shifts? Moving shift, yeah. So sometimes she would Sometimes it would be fall shift, sometimes it would be thought shift. Okay, so it might be a day or night or different times? Yeah. And do you recall um, how her time was in Nintendo? Did she get along there well? No. No, she did not. She actually got along with them uh, very poorly. She, uh, there's one person that she got along with. Um, everybody else she felt were very sexist and very, very, um, I don't know, old boys? I, I, I don't very know, but they were. Boy very old boys type of thing and uh, very much trying to run around. In fact, she felt physically threatened by several of them. Let me ask you to turn back to Exhibit 179A, okay. page 5458. Good morning. And September, possibly 8th, 2005. Now, this is just after the entry that said September, but seems to be actually July, right? Yeah. So, yeah. are you sure if it's September 2005, or are you not sure? No, I'm not sure at all. Okay. Well, would you please start reading from that entry that's dated 9-8-2005? Uh, okay. This past while has been a trying time. 
mostly due to issues involving Shao Song. When she started, she was the only female on the security team, which is still true. Shortly after all, shortly after all, hire, another new guard named Jimmy was hired. His long experience at prison made me distrust him instantly. And the stories he tells of that time made it obvious that he was, uh, that he was the low man on the totem pole. I'm willing to put aside my initial distrust of anyone, because our eyes approach every... Uh, I'm willing to put aside my initial distrust of anyone. Although I always approach every new person, I meet with a sudden wariness. But Jimmy didn't waste any time making it obvious that my distrust was justified. Sorry. Um, would you like me to reread that last? Okay. See, the thing about jail girls is that, honestly, they choose to spend time in prison, and no matter they are not, they pick up the jail thought process. Part of that is, part of that is, when you first get there, you have to prove your strength or dominance soul over someone. It's even more swift guards than the convicts. The convicts in general hate jail and want and want no part of it. The guards re the guards recall it as a great job and breaking rights. Anyway, Jimmy immediately launched an all-out attack on who he perceived the weakest target, Shell. This escalated to an insane level and the leads were called in, though all they did was chastise him. No mediation was involved, no real punishment. Just You can't be doing that there, Jimmy. No surprise. He taught he learned nothing and has since been more so, turning the rest of the security crew against Shell and starting fights between Shell and the other officers. The best part is because he didn't insinuate himself so well, most of the story isn't even acknowledged. And the rest of the officers, including the leads including the leads, immediately flock to his side when she points out his slime. This has obviously made the whole job entirely unbearable, unworkable. So, she's quitting. We're both pretty happy about that, because we're both pretty tired of this whole pile of shit. Sorry. So, is that a, an accurate summary of what you understood to be the problem at Nintendo? Uh, basically, yes. Um, and did she, in fact, quit there eventually? Uh, she did, actually. Do you... Um, you have some information in that entry about jail guards and about convicts. Yeah. Where did that information come from? Did you have any jail experience? I had that? no jail experience at the time. I was going off of entirely what my, um, what the various, uh, dads that mom had brought home. You, you used air quotes as you said. Yeah. Dads. Yeah. Because these are just various guys that mom brought home to fill in the role as dads. And they was mostly speaking from the point of view of uh, ex-cons, right? So, <laughs> so, it, so that would be, uh, you can see that there would be some level of bias there. Okay. I would uh, point out that my uh, experience since has been that that is completely inaccurate. What has been your experience with jail officers? That the jail officers are uh, very, in fact, fair people. You know, yeah, as long as you don't go around and act like a drunk, they won't treat you like a drunk. They might, because of my charge, they were, uh... Convictions, you mean? Well, before they were convictions. Um, when I first came in, they were just charges. So, when I first came in, there was some, uh, obvious love of animosity, which is completely understandable. I mean, what happened is, uh really obviously terrible thing and so there was some upset about that and I was like, okay, what kind of a uh, drunk could possibly do that to use the lightest possible term? And so there was a lot of, uh, I think there was a lot of concern on the part of the cards about that and when they realized that, no, I'm just perfectly normal and just actually try to be polite to them and respect them that they treat me with respect and tell them they've actually been totally decent Talk about that some more. Let's, let's, um, I want to get through this here. Can I say one last thing? Is that I never met Jimmy or have any independent cooperation of any of the things that I just said. Met Jimmy, and I can't independently cooperate with any of the things that I had said. No. So. so when you say you met Jimmy, that's the person no, that you um, referred to in the Nintendo entry? No, I never met him. No, I never met him. And yes, the one in the entry. Okay, so your information in that entry comes from what source? Uh, Michelle. Did you ever meet any of the other people from Nintendo? No. Well, 
That's not entirely true. I met one of the genitals. I met one of the genitals. Okay. Um, let's have you read um, another entry here going forward. Page 5567. Five, okay. conversation I'd had today, Shell's telling me about some, this is a little bit difficult because I copied both sides of the page, about some shit, uh, she... Joe, why don't, why don't you read from the original? You... Okay. Okay. A conversation I'd had today, Shell's telling me about some shit one of our supervisors are pulling. I tell her not to worry. It doesn't matter. She tells me she doesn't care. Just wants to know what his game was. I say it doesn't matter, so... I'm sorry. I say it doesn't matter, so don't worry. She says she wasn't worried. She just wanted to, just wanted to know. Our conversations often go in circles like this until she throws out that I'm not listening because she wasn't worried. My response is that she seems to be since she's preoccupied. No, that's not right. I said, most people, those, if they're so preoccupied with something, I'm worried about it. I only got, I got only most people out before she attacked me. <coughs> I hate when she does that. Being just so convinced that I don't care or I'm more enemy or some shit that she can't wait to attack me. Oh, should I keep going? Yes. Oh, I did more homework. The compiler's fighting me too. The compiler is something that's used in, uh, C++ programming. My life is, con is continual idiotic fights. This is why I play so many games. It's pretty nice to escape my pathetic and bad life. Go figure. I can't even say I've done much in this life than survive, waste air and skin, and take a space. I've lived a transitory life for so long. I I've lived a transitory life for so long. I can't say I've even made an impact on anyone's life. Not even the brother and sister I raised. If they remember me at all, the brother and sister that I raised. Sorry. If they remember, if they remember me at all, it's only that, it's only that a memory did by half of their lifetime. When I left, they were nine and ten. Now they're probably driving. I feel so empty. It makes me want to remove myself from this hollow life, so I can't waste any more. Leave and never come back. I think sometimes the people I knew and cared about, and how I feel at all, and how I failed were outright betrayed. All of, all of them. I let them all down because I'm weak, because I'm unfocused, because I'm a shell with animal instincts. Eat, sleep, choke off, and nothing else. Poor stuff to leave me, to give me meaning, a gift for me, to me, who I was, to who I am, to help me become who I'm supposed to be. I should find him and listen. That's what we were here for. Okay, now Joe, a couple of questions about that. Yes. Um, and then at the end, there's some drawings, is that right? Yes. That simply your tattoo? Yes. Now, um, first of all, let's talk about the talk about Crow. Crow okay. is there to guide me, a gift from me to me? Yeah. Exactly what does that mean? Well, my um, view at that time, and partially still, is that he was kind of my, um, is that the consciousness uh, that what we consider the human consciousness is only part of our... Uh, consciousness what? What we consider the human consciousness is only part of of who we are, right? That there's more of us than we ourselves are aware of, okay? And so that those 
this other um, this other amount of of being that is kind of our um, the term that I used to use was my uh, dead half actually though that's not quite the term that I used to use was my dead half. But that's not actually the correct term because it's more of the one that's not, the part of me that's not actually embodied, not actually living um, in the way that the rest of me is. So, in a way, it's a fragment of myself that is there to help guide me and protect me from doing stupid crap like this awful thing ended up being. Crow is. Yes. A fragment of you? I thought... He might be... Well, I don't know if he's a fragment of me, or if he's somebody that I had went and um, got him to help me out, or if he's a totemic spirit, or what. A totemic spirit? Yeah. So, the, the spirit guides Dr. Dutton talked about were who again? Crow? Uh, Crow, Melissa, um, God, he also loved him that, but God's obviously not a spirit guy. Um, and uh, he also mentioned Void and the other, except neither of those are actually spirit guides. Void and the other are not spirit guides? No, they're just parts of me. They're, they're parts of you? Yeah. So they're fragments of you? Yes. So is Crow a fragment of you? I'm not actually sure what he is. I, what his actual origin is. All I know is that he's there as a sort of a guardian to keep me from doing stupid things. But I don't think he's actually part of me. Now, if you would ask me now. now. Let me ask you another. Um, At that particular time, I did though. What's that? At that particular time, I did it. Now I don't. At which particular time? When I wrote this. In 2005. Yes. Let me ask you about this entry because you're kind of um, you're talking about this dispute with Michelle. Yeah. What was your demeanor like during these disputes? I mean, it doesn't sound like you're just immediately giving up. You're saying, "Well, the scenes." No. Like because you're so preoccupied. Yeah. So what exactly? What's the dynamic? What's the demeanor? What's your demeanor? Well, usually it would be something along the lines of she uh, starts talking about something and I'd be like, well, what about this? And then it would, I would go into just like a regular conversation. It's like, no, um, well, I mean, your demeanor, most people would go and be uh, concerned about. You know, if they're talking about something like this, they'd be concerned about that. And you know, I'd be, uh, I'd be calm trying to go and like, uh, actually keep things, keep things cool, right? Trying to go and keep things from exploding. She's, you know, starting to explode. I'm like, look, you know, just hold on while I'm just trying to explain, you know, I'm not trying to dispute your view of things. I'm not trying to talk and tell you how to do it. I'm just trying to tell you that, um, the way that you're getting upset is not what I meant, okay? Or the way that you hold me say that something was not what I meant to say, or, I didn't mean to go off and mispronounce something, or I didn't mean to make it difficult for you to hear me, or this, that, or the other thing. And as time would, and she'd actually get angry and angrier because she wouldn't want to hear my explanations. She wouldn't want to hear my backpedaling, as she called it. So she'd start shouting me down, and so I would go, and eventually, sometimes, sometimes I would get to a point where I would shout back, but usually she would just start shouting and just keep shouting about how about how I don't care about how worthless I am, about how much pain I could have through, about how terrible I am, and it would go. Usually by the end of these, I would end up in uh, caught up in a ball at the in the corner of the room, um, uh, trying to uh, tear at myself, and her standing over me, still yelling down at me, and. Even though I've eventually, even though I've like given up completely long ago, whole feeling was that it was very much the, uh, and I actually asked her about this. It's like, you know, it's, with you, it's like, be prepared to clean off although my heel you bruise. I'll be prepared to clean off even though my heel you bruise. And she's like, I'll rip your head clean off even though my, although my heel you bruise. You know, like, it's a part of something or another. Am I correct, Joe, that you said, I'll rip your head clean off even though it might cure your bruise? 
Although my heel you bruise. Although my heel you bruise. My heel? Yes. I.e. somebody goes off and a minor bruising would be would be a good reason to him like rip in retaliation that pulls his head off. Just explain what that means. I'm not it's... Of, uh, try to characterize it, so just explain what you're talking about. No, that's a quote, right? I don't know. That's a quote, actually. From what? I don't remember, recall, actually. But it is a quote. Yeah, if I, yeah. I just ask what the question was, I completely lost Well, I, 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 was, I wasn't sure what you said exactly, Joe, about ripping your head off, although my feel you were bruised. I... Hold on. So I asked you to explain that. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's a quote, but I don't remember what it's from. Uh, I'd actually asked her at one point, you know, because I had that uh, in mind, and she would, um, she would be like that. I'm like, you know, with you, it's, you know, very much, I'll rip your head clean off, although my heel you bruise. And she's like, well, yeah, I mean, if somebody's going and, if somebody's bruised, if somebody's going and bruising my heel, then I have to go, then they know that they're doing something wrong, and they know that they're, going out of the way to haunt me, and so they dissolve to be attacked back, and to be attacked back with the maximum force possible to make sure they don't screw up again. So, in the course of these, I mean, at this point, you've got a gun. Yes. Do you ever think of just, just shooting yourself and saying, that's going to be the quickest way out here? Yes. Have that conversation with it? Well, yeah, actually, well, once or twice. Um, but there was a couple times where I just went off and like, that was a couple months where I would actually, on, for a couple months on a daily basis. There was a couple of what on a daily basis? So it was a couple of months. Months? Yeah. Okay. Where I would actually on a daily basis go and take my gun, uh, which is the 357, and uh, look down at, look down the barrel and just uh, really consider going and shooting myself. And, uh, a lot of the reason I didn't actually is because I would have made a huge mess and would have left her vulnerable. And the reason that she was vulnerable in the false place I felt was because I was doing such a bad job as a guardian. So, I never actually did that. The, um, later on, uh, there actually were a couple of times where I, where she had went in, uh, beating me down, I ran back and... She had what? She beat me down like I described where I was caught up like that. Not physically beat No, no, she never physically did anything like that. So I'd go back, get the gun, and hold it to my head. like, will this make you happy? And she would talk me down because like, no, no, I love you, great, honey. I was like, but I make things so awful. Wouldn't it be better if I just shot myself? Where did the penis cutting get to oh, That was along the same lines, actually. Well, what, where, what, uh, where were you I think it actually happened twice. I think it happened in Fall City and again in, um, in uh, Carnation. A quick notice that she had made me promise not to shoot myself because she needed my, she needed my support. She needed me uh, as protection. Well, did the self protection thing come from the same? From the same, from the same sort of thing where she's sitting here and she's staring into me as being a terrible person, as being a sexist, horrible, awful person, right? And not caring enough and not even being half a man. It's like, and how she would be, how she's a much better man than I could ever be. And it's like, okay, fine. And I go over and just whip it out and like put down the cutting board and pull out the knife and just, okay, look. Well, Okay, well, then let's go. Okay, and I was just, I was going to just do it, and she stopped me from doing it. It's like, look, we don't have insurance, you know, so. So like that's the strongest argument against it or something? The insurance? It's a good argument. Joe, when, when this happened after this, did you ever, did you not after this go and look yourself in the mirror? Was this not a red flag? Did you not say, my God, what have I become? I mean, this is a bad sign for a relationship, right? Well, uh, in a way, uh, yeah, I did look myself in the mirror. I was like, wow, I've really failed. I've really screwed up. How have I become such a worthless piece of crap? How have I managed to go off and hold this much while she's... How have I managed to hold this much? How have I managed to make things this bad? Did you have any other 
felt about that incident? No. Just how have I failed so much? How did I do this? Well, I could say that he was um, 
for example, we both like want the dog, but every day we'd go take the dog out, walk it around, take it actually like right up beside the um, right beside the truck and right actually up to the front door, which actually have to go up some stairs onto the porch to go to the front door and he'd take the dog along. One time I'd actually like, you know, wa I was watching him do this. So I looked out the window, because I heard a clicking noise outside, and I'm like, what is this? Look out the window, he's, you know, trying to throw us on the truck, right? So I go around to the front, go around to the front door, grab the crowbar, and I hear it, and then I hear him actually walking up the front steps. I'm like, what? So I open up the door, and he's up right there. And I'm like, jeez, this could, wow, it's, <laughs> you be on cover, man. I didn't realize that you were there. I, I could have killed you, you know? So he's, you know, like, totally freaked out. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Hey, what about that? You know, so I just, because I don't want to hold anybody, right? How much? Because I don't want to hold anybody. I'd much rather not have to deal with it. So. Or was it in the conversation like, hey, what are you doing on my front porch? Maybe. Mm, no. No, what I did was just, hey, look, you know, be careful. Like, I don't know what you're doing here, but I could really haunt you if I didn't know who, that it was you. I thought you, were, I thought you might have been a problem or something. Did you ask him why he was trying the doors for your truck? No. How about, so the way that mobile home cars work, right, is you own the mobile home and then you rent the lot, correct? Yeah. And so there's a, a, a property manager, landlord, landlady? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Were you in touch with that person? Actually, quite a bit, yes. <laughs> Couldn't you phone her and be like, hey, one of the other tenants is coming up on our porch? She actually was doing that, yeah. And so she, and so then I was like, well, we need well, we did say that he was, they did come up on the porch, I think. But she had, uh, she was talking about the various, uh, disputes that were going, that were ongoing. This was, um, through Michelle, not me, actually. Mostly. Through Michelle? Yeah. Mostly I was just kind of standing there up to the side. What was through Michelle, not you? Ah, the experiences. With the landlady? Yes. Okay. Is that Ms. Menzinger? Uh, my, yeah. But the thing on the front porch with the guy that came up, that was you? That was me, yeah. Uh, did you observe anything else that might keep your eyes to the conclusion that you guys were being stalked? You know, other than, the thing that had actually set me off on this particular occasion, right, is that we were, is that we were sitting out, uh, if I remember correctly, we were actually sitting out on the lawn, and this, we looked over and he had actually went and moved a couple of slats from his back window so that he could actually, because he had uh, Venetian blinds, right? And uh, so that, because he would sit in his house and just smoke and just, you know, blow it out though. And so we'd blow it out the back window, but it always seemed like he was watching us. Because, I mean, we'd look over and there would always be the ember, like, you know, pointing at us. It's like, why is this guy watching us? There would always be the ember from the cigarette? Yeah. So it was... Slash in the Venetian lines, right? Yeah, and he, and he would just always be sitting there watching us. It's like, why is this guy watching us so much? Well, you can't conclude that he removed those just so he could see, right? No, but she did, and she really got an angry about it. She got in a really... very upset, and I'm really responsive to the emotions of others. And especially when my entire life is built around this particular level. So... Especially when your entire My life. entire life is built around this particular other one, so I overreacted a little bit. Meeting Michelle? Yeah. So while the whole time you lived in that trailer park, did you ever actually <coughs> hurt anybody? Absolutely not. Did you ever use the crowbar? Absolutely not. In fact, I actually managed to, um, there was one point where I was like, look, how about we just get everybody together and just, you know, stop and talk for a minute and figure these things out. <coughs> and it turned out that they were watching us because we were being weird and watching them watch us. They were looking around because there's, you know, small town kind of knows people and it's like, hey, who's, who's here, right? We we're going to be freaking out because, you know, she's used to she meaning Michelle. Michelle being from the country and like nobody else being around or she's used to not having people around and so having a buffer zone. And me, I'm just going with what she views because it's like, okay, well, you're probably right. I mean, so after you had this get-together with everybody, what yeah. happened then? Did that take uh, care of it? We came back in. Okay, so after all things had been uh, calmed down, we went inside and I'm like, okay, I feel pretty good about this. I feel like things are things calmed down now, right? And the first thing I found out, I told her to say, I told her to say something about that, and the first thing she says is, I do not trust those fuckers. Sorry, but that's
Yes, I should. So then what happened? Did you change from what you did? Did the tension lighten up or anything like that? The tension lighted up, um, but we were still trying to get out of it. We uh, put all the house up for a sale, like right away. You what? We put all the place up for sale. Okay. First, we tried to go off and find a place where we could move the uh, little model to. She really liked it and she wanted to uh, move it to another um, location. That's not as easy as it sounds like. There's not really a lot of places that, there's not really a lot of uh, land that's like available that has hookups for uh, mobile on it. Usually, place. You guys were both working, right? She at least retired from yeah. working at Nintendo, right? Yeah. And when you lived in Fall City, did that happen when she worked with your mom at the post office? Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, yeah. That was what? That was terrible. Why was it terrible? She would come home every day so angry, so furious about what these people were doing to her. And in all reality, you know, my mom was really going out of her way. Sorry. Judy was really going out of her way to look out for her. I mean, she was. Let me pause it. Because in the rural post offices, they don't have their own vehicles. They, I mean, the post office doesn't have their own vehicles. They, uh, exactly. Um, so is this already after you have worked at Target in Redmond? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. So, but you were still paying then from savings? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So just... So it's still covering the line. conclusion here. Why, yes. why exactly or how should you put the post office? So, I'm like, look. How about you just go off and quit? You're coming home so angry all the time. I mean, she had come home so furious. She was coming home on a daily basis, just wanting to go off and kill these people. And... She was talking about killing them? Well, more than usual. She was, like, really angry. I mean, she was just, like, on fire all the time, angry. And I'm just like, look, please, just quit. I'll go back to work. You don't need to keep worrying about this stuff. I mean, if these people don't appreciate you, then there's no need to, to keep going through this, okay? So now you keep putting yourself through this obstacle of it, I'll just go back to work, okay? Please just let me go back to work. So she let me talk her into putting. So, and when you left Target, did you, what was it, a voluntary quit or you fired or anything? No, it was this voluntary resignation. They were like, look, they didn't want me to quit. It was a good job, they liked me though. Okay, um, so you're trying to sell the mobile home, I'm guessing is that eventually you did because you moved up to Wayne Judy's place, right? Actually, I ended up selling it back to the, uh, to the management. Okay. But yes. And then from there you moved to the place that Wayne Judy provided? Yeah. Now tell me, what was the deal out there? Were you paying for anything at all, or was it just a total free ride until you guys decided to kill We, um, when we had first went up there, we actually went up there because, uh, because of our concerns about the neighbor and at fault about the neighborhood, and at first they weren't really too bothered by it, but after all, Michelle, at first, at first too bothered by it, who are you talking about? I'm talking about, uh, Wayne and Judy. We're not too bothered by what? By the idea, by the, uh, danger that we were in, because, we're like, okay, well, maybe she's overreacting, right? And then, um, there was a couple of trips in which, um, Michelle went with Wayne and also with, also later on, I can't remember if, earlier with Judy to visit their respective families. Um, um, where? Where did they go? When she went with Wayne was to uh, Nevada to actually visit her, uh, Wayne's brother, Ken, right? Who we uh, saw previously uh, because her um, grandmother, Elsie, which was Wayne's mother, had uh, died. So, um, you know, sorting out all of the uh, business and whatnot. How did that affect, did that have any effect on her relationship with her dad? That had a huge effect on her relationship with her dad. Before she went on that relationship with her, uh, I mean, before she went on that trip, her and her dad just really didn't get along too well. By the time they came back, they had really buried the hatchet. In fact, the, uh, their entire relationship had done 180 to, a, to the point where she really liked him. And really, they really liked him to care for each other. As much as she had hated and uh, all the animosity, all the uh, hatred and uh, doubt that she had had for follows now, like, completely revolves to us, like, okay, this guy is really on my side. He's really looking out for me. He's really going to go off and like, try and help me do this, do right on this. And, uh, um, getting the, uh, getting the house together, getting, uh, putting her in a position where she's safe and whatnot. And mostly trying to, um, get, uh, 
which had a property for them to move to, you know, for, uh, for us, Scott, and uh, Mary and her children to uh, split, right? That was a 15 acre property, like right beside where he lived. And he, he made the property. Yeah, and he was going to split it into five eight acre parcels, right? Um, among them, they were going to go off pay him back, and that ended up being um, the, uh, that just really didn't work out, so that just kind of fell by the way. So after all that, was uh, put aside as just like, okay, well, we're not going to bother trying. We'll try. Okay, so but at one point, you're going to show those that are down in Nevada. Exactly. Comes back, and things are great. Yeah, she, she, she comes back. He's trying yeah. to help her, right? Yeah, and when... Let me ask okay. you a question. Okay. Was that before or after you left Fall City? Well, that's before we left Fall City. Okay. And, um, you know, we heard Mark Mann said, oh, for years, killing your family was your fantasy or something like that. Have Michelle talked about killing her family before you moved back up to the place of Carnation? Oh, yeah. She talked about killing a lot of people. Okay, so, but I mean, was there ever any, any discussion of, like, wow, should we really be moving back up there? Do you, you even want to kill these people? Well, I didn't particularly want to move up there in the first place because it's like, I didn't really want to move farther out from everything because I didn't like being further away than where I could walk to walk or walk to if I need to do something. I didn't like relying on, on calls. That was the other thing about calls that I forgot to mention. Like, you know, I don't really like relying on anybody or anything. Okay? And so, well, okay. a lot of things slowed so, me down. But, um, anyway, yeah, there was no... The trip between Wayne and with mm -hmm. your mother. When, when did that occur? Where were you living? Fall City or Carnation? <coughs> Both times we were living in Fall City. And where was this trip to? Where were these trips to? The uh, one with Wayne, I can't remember which order they were in. But the one with me was to uh, Nevada. was to the Nevada area, yeah. What about the one with you? In fact, the one with me was to the Vegas area. The one with you was to the Reno area, which was to visit her family. Her mother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Her mother had fallen down broken right. Judy's mother had broken right. Yes. Okay. Her mother had fallen down and broken right. Sorry. <clears throat> and so, what effect? What do you know about that trip, or did that have any effect on Michelle's relationship with her mother? That had a terrible effect on our relationship with her. In fact, I think that this probably uh, antedated that it came before her uh, meeting, her uh, working for the post office, because she um, had actually went into this particular thing. Uh, she actually went on that particular trip with uh, very much, okay, I'm going to go off and take care of mom, make sure that she's okay. And uh, Scott and um, everybody was like, really? Well, take care of mom. I know she, that she gets kind of goofy sometimes, but. You can do this, right? You know, I'm, I'm expecting you to go off and take care of home, right? Um, by the time she came back, she, her relationship with mom, I mean, with Judy, had completely 180 as well. She went from really liking and really caring about her mom to, frankly, hating her and having a hard time not killing her right there. But did you have any, I mean, did you say when Michelle came back, I guess she talked about this? Well, yeah, and we talked on the phone, I'm like, look, you know, don't do that, and the re she was actually saying that the reason that she had kept herself from doing that was because she was, that she had kept herself from shooting uh, Judy because she did have a gun on her, right? She took her gun on the tree yeah. with her mom. Well, yeah, protection, right? And the reason that she uh, didn't use it on Judy was because she was so, um, because they had asked her to look out, you know, it's like, look, make sure you take care of mom, so... Um, so, but when you came back, when she came back and you had this conversation with her, I mean, you knew Judy, right? Yeah. Did Judy ever need or threaten you or any of that stuff to you? No, she wasn't. I pointed this out, and uh, she was like, look, that's how she is with you, and uh, it was like this with um, actually most people. That's how they're like with you, and that's how they're like with me. They're nice to you because they're scared of you. They're not nice to me because I'm just uh, this, you know, fat little girl that nobody needs to take seriously. And that's how she would describe herself? Yes. Look, I never would go off and make uh, any deal of her size or anything because, honestly, I didn't care, okay? It's, it was an aspect of this, how she was, whatever, right? But uh, it really bothered her a lot. It could, um, psychologically, she brought it up a lot and it really um, preyed on her a lot. It put uh, extra strain on her. It um, made her very sensitive to temperatures. She'd uh, actually at one point 
she actually get really upset about Erica's weight as well because she's like, oh, that's so disrespect disrespectful that Erica's gotten this big and she's got this guy who's like going off and like walking this home and then he comes home and she's all big like that. And meanwhile, she's, you know, not going like something. It's just like, I didn't say anything, but it's just kind of like, whatever, right? Um, so, she also, at one point, she lost, when she was walking, um, and it's, you know, I've had...
I, I wish you were right about the social component. Frankly, it's not the most fun thing I go to. But to to I, I don't know if the defense would, would want to consider, I haven't really considered it myself, presenting uh, Dr. Weaver by Skype. Uh, maybe not, but uh, I know there's actually they talked about that in the context of an interview in the past, but again, that's, that's their problem. And secondly, if we, uh, when we uh, do this, um, I wonder if the court would consider this uh, brief explanation to the jury that in order to accommodate some witness scheduling issues, we're going to break up the testimony so they, they don't wonder what's, what's going on. I fully intend to do that because they don't need to be in the dark about something like that. I think they'll understand, given the length of the trial to begin with and the difficulties we've had in past scheduling people because, frankly, we got ahead of schedule. So, um, so I don't have any quarrel with doing that whatsoever. Um, so, and Kenny, before I forget to ask you, after you bring the jury, could you grab that envelope of material so I could give Mr. Kula a heads up as to how many pages there are, because I frankly don't remember. Okay? Thanks. Uh, anything else before we bring the jury in? No, you are Okay, great. So let's bring them in. And Mr. McEnroe, if I could invite you back to the stand, sir. So, 
that she wanted the car fixed. It wasn't fixed yet. But Scott was working. He had a young family. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, was there ever any discussion like, okay, well, let's just take the car and either sell it or take it to a repair shop? Actually, we'd uh, taken it to a number of different repair shops, and uh, nobody was interested in working on it because it was... It was another call. Uh, newer calls, they just have a thing where you like, plug them into a machine and it'll go off and actually tell you what needs to be done with it. This was another call was before that. Um, we actually left it at one, at one repair shop for Joe. a year. And we, did, we, and we just got it back. So you took it to some repair yeah. shops and, and, and it sounds like it, that yes. for some reason they couldn't fix it. It didn't quite work, yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, once again, could you explain, you said that the, the, um, the, the idea of killing her family had really kind of solidified or come up yeah. at Easter or Christmas yeah. before, so either Christmas 2006 or Easter 2007? Yeah. Could you explain to this jury, please, how that came up? Well, um... She had, so she's having this problem with the car and she's like, she's going and Scott basically all the time to go and like try and get her money back because she's like, look, you've got a good job, you should be able to go off and give me my money, right? And I didn't really realize this at the time, but I mean, she was going to, apparently she brought this up like at Nathan's boss and it's like, really kind of tasteless, but I didn't really realize, sorry, I didn't really realize that she was getting so, um, over the top with that about, on that side, um, Wainsview was like, look, we're letting you stay here basically rent free, so what are you complaining about, right? I mean, you don't have any room going and asking this guy for money when we're looking out for you, so just lay off, okay? And to all that was them taking his side in this dispute because she's like, why should this have anything to do with this? So, um, she felt that they were uh, going after her and betraying her like that. So hold on a second. So. She felt that they were going after her and betraying her like that. But you still decided to move up there rent free, right? We had already been living there rent free, yeah. Okay. And when you moved up there rent free, at that point, was she still working at the post office or Nintendo? At that point, she was not working, no. In fact, uh, neither of us were at that point. Neither of you were. No. Because one of you had to stay at home and guard the house. Yeah. But at that point, she wasn't working, so why didn't she go back to work? Um, shortly after what I did, um, after I got, I was helping to uh, set the place up and everything, doing all the... Set the place up, you mean the, the 1910? Yes. Address the trailer? Yes. Okay. Making it livable. Shortly after that? Yeah. Once I got it uh, livable, I started walking again, yeah. Okay, well, again... Why the need for the rent-free living? You guys, you had, when you were arrested, correct me if I'm wrong, you had about $12,000 in there, is that right? Yes. Okay. And she had money in the bank too, correct? Yes. Upwards of, of ten dollars or $15,000, right? Yes. When you did Bond the outside of the Seattle area where real estate is insanely priced and put a down payment on a, on a little place, right? We could have, yeah. Did you have that discussion? Actually, we did. And she wasn't interested in moving outside of the uh, Seattle area. And she had, I don't, I don't know, she felt that she was entitled to a oh, share of the property. The share of the property? Yeah. <coughs> the Carnation property. She was, the on, ongoing thing was that she was more that she would get cut out of that. So... Okay, but what about, you know, we've got some money in the bank, maybe you didn't have quite that much a year before, but right. you had been working, you said you had been paying rent back at the trailer park, yes. even though you weren't working, right? Yes. So you had some savings. Yes. So again, I don't, uh, what's, why not pay rent to Wayne and Judy? She had convinced them that we were uh, basically indigent at that point. Indigent? Yeah. And that we would pay up, that we only need a year to get on our feet and whatnot. Hold on, I missed all that. What? And that we needed a year to get on our feet. Okay. I didn't really particularly like that. I mean, I don't like living off. I mean, I'm sitting here almost 30 years old. Why do I want to go off and like live with my girlfriend's dad? You know? I mean, seriously, that's just pathetic. Okay? I've been living up. I've been living on my under, under my 
own steam. This I've been living under my own steam since about Arizona. And going and living off of somebody else is just but, pathetic. I mean, you, um, the idea was they were going to support you for a year or something like that? She felt that this was something that was owed, so she's like, look, this is, they owe me this, so whatever. I'm just like, okay, whatever makes you happy. Well, did you see Wayne and Judy independent of the show? Did you ever, when you were around the property, hello, talk to them? Not much. Did you ever talk to them about the rent situation? Did they ever say, hey, Joe, we want to talk to you about, you know, how we can start to have you pay rent or anything like that? The fact is, I actually went and um, they brought me only on in this whole thing. They'd actually brought, Wayne had given uh, Shell a couple of um, rent contracts. And I'd actually been to drawn up a contract for us to work with that would, that after a year would go and start at like 200 and walk its way up to about a uh, grand and actually point out, okay, so this, this, and this is what we're going to be working with. These bills are all on us. This is his responsibilities and so forth and so forth. As far as I know, that was never actually printed up and brought to him. And, but you, you had some kind of agreement about your working around? Yes. Yeah. Were you actually doing those things? Yes, I was. Eventually she had me stop doing those, but yeah. Did the plan um, to kill them and, and um, that plan to kill them in advance, did that include the date that was chosen, Christmas Eve? I think it actually did, yes. Okay. The, um, Let me ask you another question. Okay. Um, were you already living up in Carnation with that, when that plan came about? I do not know. And um, what was the what was the reason what was the reason for it? what on earth was the reason for it? Well, originally she wanted to go and um, basically show up at Scott's walk and uh, kill him and then get the car or truck and drive it back oh, oh. and you want to show up at Scott's work and kill him and take the car yeah well when he went out to his vehicle to kill him and then take this vehicle and drive it back to Erica's and kill all there. And it's just like, these guys... Now, this is going to sound really weird because um, basically I'm just pointing out, you know, these guys live right down the street from a police station as opposed to, you know, that's really immoral, but pointing out that things were really, that killing someone was really immoral just she had no interest in hearing it, so I had to go. So usually what I would end up doing was having to point out the logical problems with something as opposed to the moral problems with something. But did you try to point out the moral problems? Were you like, what, why, what is that going to solve, Michelle? Think I, anyway, yeah, that was actually that was, I did go off and actually bring that one up. It's like, look, how is this going to help anything? And she's like, it'll go and show them not that, you know, people shouldn't mess with me. It should, um, it sh It'll go and give all of the uh, closure that she needs to be able to move on with things. She was really obsessed with the whole idea of closure for past wrongs, and so if she hadn't gotten, if she had, if she wasn't able to get closure for all the things that people had done to her, then she, then it would never get better. Some people are able to just let go of things, like me, and some people just let it. When something bad happens, they just let it fester in them and eat away at them and consume them, like she did. Joe, I mean, I, I mean, it just sounds okay. So you said that she didn't want to hear about the moral end of things, like killing violates every law of God and man, right? So you would give, approach her with logical arguments, yes, right? Yes. I mean, what about closure? The only closure you're going to get is the closure of the jailhouse door, Michelle. I mean, how can you possibly think you get away with this? She was convinced that. She was convinced that some people, their role is that they're supposed to be killing and that she, the reason that she was having such problems in her life was because she hadn't killed people. And if she did go off and kill people, then, it would be, then things would walk out where they should be going. Yes, I did bring up, look, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go off and do these things. You're concerned about this. I'm concerned about this too, you know? Okay, I'm upset about this. She's and, uh, concerned about this. I'm just... And she just didn't have a lot of patience for that. I just, this is something that I had like an ongoing thing for years, the entire time of me trying to be like, look, 
let's not kill these people. Uh, maybe there's a better way to go about things. Maybe this doesn't have to happen like this. Not necessarily this particular instance, but in general, right? And it just it wasn't enough. And actually, at this point, she's like, "Look, I've tried doing things your way. I've tried going to, I tried going to my parents. I've tried going and walking with the police. I've tried going and doing going to supervisors. I've tried all these things. And every time that I've done things your way, things have gone wrong. So maybe I should be trying to go trying things my way for once." So hold on. Killing people that, that had come up throughout the course of your living well, yeah. in the Seattle area? Yeah. But from April 2002 until December 2007, there was no killing. Yeah, I managed to talk her out of it, yeah. Okay. You just said that she had managed to, she had tried to go to the police? Because there were times we'd had problems and she went to the police, yeah. What Not that? in this particular case, but in other things when somebody had went to like Bastille Call, for example. So like with the whole, somebody's bashing the car back in the Yeah, yeah. But was there ever any discussion? I mean, well, let me ask you. Did you ever at the time think, wow, this woman is crazy. I, I better see if there's some resources available to help them. Anything. 911, maybe talking to Wayne and Judy? Well, no, actually. Um, I mean, I had, like I said, I had concerns about her, but I figured that, okay, she's just been through a lot and eventually she'll get better and Hold on. You what? that eventually she'll get better and was there any sign of that happening over the course of five and a half years? Uh, frankly she might actually got worse as time went on uh, a lot worse as time went on and it never occurred to me to go and do something because she was really her big, biggest fear was going to um, going to an institution um, a mental institution being kept out to, uh, for treatment because she was convinced that she was not crazy, that she was the only one who was really seeing things how they are, and that she had, because she'd gone, because she'd actually gone through treatment previously, um, she'd gone treatment for depression, as Mark was telling uh, everybody about. Um, that was not with the psychologist, right? No, that was not with the psychologist. She felt that because she had went and got a treatment for depression that eventually the, um, that particular treatment had eventually went and made her so that her, um, so that things were loaded up and proper so that... So that things were what? So that, um, whatever lack was corrected, right? So whatever problem she was had was having was corrected by that point, so she felt that she did not have any reason to be going to um, get help again because she felt that she was on an even keel. She felt she was on an even keel? Yeah, she had doubts about everybody else, but she felt that she was on an even keel. I, I didn't hear you. She had doubts about everybody else. Sorry. But when you're with her, she's talking about neighbors being out to get you and killing people and this alleged wrong that Scott had done with the car. Yeah. You were working for at least part of the time when you were in Carnation, correct? Yes. You worked at the Target in Issaquah? Yeah. And you did a brief summary without a lot of technical details, but what exactly did you do at Target? Um, I unloaded trucks, I um, put merchandise on the floor, and then I would go off back stock it. And you would back stock it? Yeah.
Did you ever look into it? Did you ever look in the phone book? No. Back, um, you had a phone line. Did you have, this was 2007, but maybe you had...
Um, so. so you had these discussions, and when she started saying that, that these guys were warped, you said? Yeah, children, actually. Was there a discussion of, uh, again, I mean, looking for some logic here? No, she actually was just sitting here going off, like, showing me these things, um, trying to... Showing you what things? trying to uh, build up this logic and telling me these things and I'm like, look, I'm not sure this is right. You know, I'm not really sure about this. And she's like, look, trust me. You trust me, don't you? I know what I'm doing. I wouldn't go off and say this if it wasn't true. You trust me, don't you? That's and kind of little like what she was giving the Mark Man on the phone there. So that's yeah, similar. Except like a lot heavier and constant. And it just increased as time went on, especially in that last month. That last month it was 24 hours day and night. We were, um, after I'd quit, we were sleeping in shifts, literally. Um, hold on, hold on, let's, let's... Okay. After you quit, you were sleeping in shifts? Sleeping in shifts. Okay, so... so you have been working at Target up until... The weekend after Thanksgiving. Okay, so roughly a month before the incident? Yeah. A month or five weeks? Okay. Yeah. Uh, four weeks actually. Okay. Yeah. Did you, um, I want to just, because this is relevant as we talk about how this, this thing unfolded, um, there was some discussion in the Sh Michelle's police statement to um, Detective Tompkins about why you quit Target and become an electrician. How did that happen when you quit Target? Okay. You said before that you liked the job. Yeah. She didn't. I feel it was a real job though because it wasn't um, it wasn't a union job and it wasn't um, well a construction job I mean and it was what? it wasn't an office job and it wasn't a construction job so, so two real jobs? those are the only real jobs as far as she was concerned so after Ryan had started working as an electrician she's like wow this guy's after, making after who after Ryan Bagel Ryan the gentleman who was in here yes that particular one had um, had started as an electrician she's like wow these guys make a lot of money right. And she started wanting me to, to do that, and I'm like, but I like my job. She's like, look, I don't care if you like your job. You can make more money here. You should get a real job. You're all, you know, almost 20 years old. It's like, okay, why not? So did you take some steps to become an electrician? I did. I went and got my GED, and I, um, and I got a, uh, took an online math course for that. The uh, Nick, only thing that would have been left was getting a driver's license, and... She tried to teach me how to drive, and that was one of the most horrifying experiences of my life. Um, not quite as bad as uh, what came later, but it was still really awful. What's the big deal? Uh, she is very possessive of her vehicles, and it's one of those things where it's really hard to explain exactly why it was so bad. It's one of the things, for example, one of the things was that the uh, wheels on the truck were a little bit bigger than they should be, so if you turn too tight, they would uh, kind of grind against the inside of the uh, wheel well. Now, she could feel this because she was attenuated to the truck. I could, she would feel it because? She was attenuated to the truck. Now, I had no idea what, the, you know, what this was doing one way or the other. I'm just like, okay, wheel goes this way, you know, truck goes this way, right? And she was going and getting more and more upset at me, and because uh, we're, I'm risking all this really expensive investment, really important investment that is the only way of getting around. But with my, um, with my um, casualness, I guess, you know? So with these, with these, let me just ask you, it's, like, it's odd here, you're telling me how bad these driving lessons were, but at the same time, you guys are talking about massacring a family. I mean, laying those two things next to each other, it's really hard to get too worked up about the driver, right? Yeah, these are two completely separate things, yeah. But they were happening around the same time, driving lessons? Yeah, actually. Um, actually, the driving, the driving lessons for, um, you know, she was talking about killing everybody at, in that time. She what? She yeah. was usually talking about killing everybody, so that doesn't change much. Um, okay. The, okay. the driving lessons... The driving lessons were actually taking place at um, when I was still in Fall City. Okay. Yeah. So, but as far as, as killing people, she was talking about that all the time. It sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, at this period of incarnation, either after Christmas 06 or Easter 07, mm -hmm. 
things got a lot more intense. Intense, okay. Realistic Sorry. as far as the killing potentially happening. Um, you know, I wouldn't say realistic, no. Why not? Because realistic mean would go off and apply some level of uh, planning, strategizing, uh, think actually like making real steps, right? And it sounds like you are planning and strategizing. If you don't want to do it at Scott's place, it's an option down the street. Yeah. Kind of well, isn't it? Well, that would be about the extent of it, though. Because mostly she was just sitting here going and talking about how this had, how going over old, old grievances and um, how bad these people were and how this had to happen and how the things that her mother had put her through when she was younger and the things that her father had done and how Scott was, had like torn on them and wasn't, was. had torn on them and how the uh, children were being, becoming corrupt and how Erica was a bad person and corrupted Scott and but again, you know these people, right? You yes. met Scott, right? I met him. I didn't know him particularly well. Oh, okay, Erica. But you met Scott, you met Erica? Yes. Any signs of him being a bad person no. you observed? No. Actually, uh, my observations of them were that they were actually rather nice people. Okay. Um, and tell us some more about what is happening. Is it in the, I think where we had gotten to is that you stopped working at Target. Yeah. She wanted you to be an electrician. Yeah, but that's like far before you're actually like a year or two back with the uh, wanting me to be an electrician stuff. Okay, but what she told Detective Tom Wait, was, so she had what? Hold on. Hold on, Joe. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Okay. Um, she told Detective Tompkins that you were passed over for a promotion at Target. Yes. Is that true? This is true. Okay. And so she said, well, I thought, let's just have you quit. I, and I'm not reading from the exhibit, so it's not exactly yes. what I beg your pardon, but let's just have you quit and become an electrician, right? That's inaccurate. That's not accurate? I'm not saying that that's inaccurate from what, from the oral statement. I'm just saying that that's inaccurate, okay, factually. What really happened? That the reason that I, one of the things that I had quit uh, Redmond Target for was to study to be an electrician. When I had said that I was going and doing some schooling, well, um, earlier, when I said that I was doing some schooling in Red, after leaving Redmond Target, the first thing I was studying for was to be an electrician. Okay. And then when I realized that this was not going to happen because of the driving thing, I started studying uh, programming instead. Okay. So, so why did you quit Target? When you, why did you quit Target? I ended up uh, actually seeking... In fact, the only reason I was seeking the promotion was because I was hoping that, okay, maybe this will go and be a good reason, do some kind of, um, I was hoping that it would kind of, for whatever reason, be a um, reason not to do this. A reason not to do what? This. Killing. What did you say? Killing. Killing your family on Killing your family on Christmas, yes. Sorry. I, I was hoping that having that and so having some reason why it's like, look, things are going perfectly well without killing people, okay? So we don't have to go off and do this thing. So we don't have to go through these steps. So everything's going to work out just fine without going to do, without going and doing this. And then it got passed over anyway. She's like, look, see, that's a sign that we should, that's just proof that we should be going and doing it this way. So... But you did, she didn't sign the resignation paper. Right? No, she convinced me that. You did that yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. And did you do that? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, you said that you kept coming at her with logical arguments. Um, I can think of a whole number of logical arguments why not to do this. Yeah. So what kind of arguments did you make to her about why killing this family? What did you do to try to stop this, Joe? I can't even say no. I tried everything that I could, okay? And she would just what so... What did you try? I mean, everything. I think I even probably did go off point. And I was like, look, this is totally unnecessary, okay? And she's like, look, I know what I'm doing. I know this is important. I have to do this. If I don't do this, then, you know, things are just going to continue the way that they are, okay? And, I mean... It sounds so lame to sit here and not be able to at least go off and explain what I did, but I did do everything I could, everything that I could think of, 
and she was just she just get tired of listening to me just start snapping fingers in my face like like and I'm like what are you doing you know until I stopped talking and she's like I'm like what are you doing why are you doing that and she's like snapping my fingers in your you know face like you're a dog so that because I'm trying to train you train you to listen okay because my, me having a view that differed from Holes was not good enough, okay? Me trying to go off and explain why this was a bad idea was not good enough. Me trying to explain, look, if everybody's going to die anyway, then why are we going and jumping the gun? Does it really matter? I want to be sure. How, do you, how are you supposed to go off and argue with that kind of logic? Well, why not just walk out the door and leave? I couldn't do that. I just, you know, pro at, pro showed me the same thing, and I couldn't do that. What do you mean? Let's talk about how is Crow involved in this. The only way the Crow is involved in this is that I'm sitting here, and things are getting way out of hand. I'm just like, okay, so what the hell am I supposed to do? And it's just, he showed me that I could just walk out, and it's like, no, I can't. So you've had a conversation with Crow about this? Not really. Well, what did you do? Well, if he... Well, if I'm sitting here wondering these things, and he showed me this. How did he show you that you could walk away? He just showed me. I don't know. I can't say it better than that. I'm sorry. But you didn't follow his advice? No. No, I didn't. Why not just shoot Michelle? My goodness. She was... <laughs> For all that, I mean, I don't mean to make her sound like she's like this monstrous boss, I mean, because she was, I mean, she was really just this very, this very, this person was like very hot, very scared, very, very emotionally fragile, right? And just, she had a hard time handling things. It's not that she was mean or cruel or that she was as vicious as she sounds, she's just, she felt that she really did have to go off and like lash out at these people because other lash out at people when they didn't agree with her or whatever because otherwise they would go and lash out at home and try to take her apart. So she would lash out at, other, at others and try to take them apart instead. Did you see, regardless of what Pro said, was it realistic for you to leave? Could you, had you thought it through? Like, no, I could just... Yeah, I did think it. about it. Hold on, had you thought it through and hear you express? Had you thought I could just walk down the road or... Get a ride, maybe get up when Lane's going to work in the morning, ask him to drop me off in Carnation, get a cab, take a bus, anything in the world to get out of there. Yes. You had to have that. Yes. Well, why, again, why not? On one hand, I thought that she would proceed along with that particular route anyway. Sorry. And I, on one hand, I thought that she would proceed along that particular route anyway. You would, she would proceed along that particular route anyway, and that it would be worse because of that. Okay. Worse. Um, the way that it is, at least nobody suffered. At least. At least nobody suffered. The way that it is, at least nobody suffered. Now, that might not be worth much, but I was doing what I could. Um, the other thing is, I just, I couldn't abandon her like that. You what? I could not abandon her like that. So instead, it's okay to kill this family? Instead, I'm sitting here going and trying to come up with ways to get around this, to keep this from happening, and eventually, and here's the, here's the part where willful ignorance comes in. Here's, here's the part where willful ignorance comes in. Willful ignorance? Yeah, well, she's like, look, we are in danger. These people are getting ready to attack us, you know? And I actually believed it, okay? It hadn't even occurred to me to, until like a couple days ago that's like, wait a second, that was crap. That was like obvious crap too. I didn't even think about it. Oh, they just happened to be going off and getting ready to attack us while we're coming down at this. It just happens to go off and co coincide with what she wants to do? Really? Excuse me, may I ask if you say it didn't occur to me until a couple days before or a couple of days ago? Ago, actually. Like, just. Yes. March of 2015? Like, I think it was Saturday. In seven years in the jail, that never occurred to you? I just hadn't done the uh, logic of that. Mostly my thoughts all end up being really caught up with, okay, how could I prevent this? And 
what the hell am I supposed to do with this? And most of all, the event itself. Not, okay, well, when she said this, was she lying? So that part, when she said this, was she lying, that's something that didn't occur until a couple of days ago? No. But you were thinking about how could I have avoided this? Yeah, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I could have avoided this. And none of these, none of these paths made sense to you? I mean, what about just killing yourself? No, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying... All the stuff that I tried to put out there before all this just didn't work. As far as killing myself, as far as killing myself, I would have if I thought that would have helped. I thought that it would have just made things worse. She said she needed me and I believed her. So, no, if I could have killed myself and kept them alive, I absolutely would have, okay? But... Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.